Welcome to Hall Pass, the Virgin Islands Department of Education's exciting talk show highlighting all things education. I'm your host, Jure Ford, and today we'll be talking about PBIS, that's Positive Behavioral Interventions and Supports. This is a systemic change process that's happening throughout the entire country and has already been adopted in some schools here in the territory. We're going to be talking about how PBIS has been implemented and how important it is for our kids. It's all about teaching behavioral expectations like you would any core subject, math, reading, writing. But enough about that from me. We have two experts in the house that could tell you all about it. With us, we have Tamitha Peck, the Territorial Director of Positive Behavioral Interventions and Supports as well as Linnea Fredericks, the St. Thomas, St. John District Coach. Welcome. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having us. So we don't have our hall pass today, but this still is hall pass. So I'm going to jump right into some questions. Ready? Ready. Great. Everybody <laughs> wants to know about PBIS. It's trending. It's a buzzword. Exactly what is it, Tamitha? OK, so PBIS is in over 21,000 schools in the mainland. The program is based on research, proven research that it works for all, in all different climates and cultures in different school systems all over America. Basically, the essential components of PBIS is to uh, give positive acknowledgments, define and teach behavioral expectations. Um, it's definitely not a prescribed program. Each school, we, we go into the schools and we look at each individual school, what are their specific problems? And we look at those problems based on their data. Everything is pretty much um, data driven. Mm -hmm. So we look at their specific problems and that individual school comes up with a behavioral expectation matrix. Oh my goodness, what is that, right? Yeah, I was just about what to is ask that? you. <laughs> <laughs> so behavioral expectation matrix. So say for example, you're in a classroom what is the expected behavior in a classroom? What, as a school, what do you want to see in your students? What type of behavior? So instead of just making the assumption that all kids know what the behavior is, as you mentioned, we teach math, we teach swimming, we teach older students how to drive. So why don't we teach behavior? So it, it's something that we really have to have that mind shift that in order to have better behavior, we have to teach define, reteach, model as adults, and also give those positive acknowledgements. Also, I mean, I could go on for days about this. I love PBIS. We're, our team is extremely passionate about PBIS. So PBIS is based on a, a multi-tiered system of support. It's a behavioral framework based on three different levels, like a triangle. And so the bottom, um, like 80% of the triangle is considered universals for all. So the schools will have their behavior expectations. They'll define those expectations. They'll teach them, they'll reteach them, they'll model them. And it's for all students, all staff, um, all locations, even like the bus, the cafeteria, um, besides classrooms. So we really want to ingrain in our students what we want to see. So that's tier one. Tier two is more looking at a group or like a, cl a class of students that may have similar poor behaviors that we want to change. So we target them and, and specialize our intervention for that group. That at the top of the triangle would be like the red tier, tier three. So tier three would more be targeted intervention for individuals. So an individual may need a behavior plan. They may need, um, you know, mental health. You know, they may need something totally different than the other tiers. So PBIS is basically a multi-tiered system of support. It's just looking at what you have in the school and offering support at different levels depending on the need of that particular school. So it's, it's like a customized program. Hundred it's different every school. <laughs> Excuse me, it's different in the sense that it targets the issues that the school is having, that individual school. Okay. So you may see similarities, of course, in um, like everybody will have a matrix. Everybody will have a, 
a flow chart of defining major and minor behaviors and it kind of gives the teachers a way to say, okay, if Johnny is having a minor behavior, what do I do next? So we offer strategies and systems of support in order to help them decrease that poor behavior in Johnny before it goes to a major uh, office disciplinary referral form. So it, there's so many intricate um, avenues in PBIS. For example, we look at office disciplinary referrals on PowerSchool. We look at academic achievement, mostly in uh, English language arts and math. We look at attendance, not only in students, but also sometimes in staff. Um, it, PBS is mainly just trying to improve school climate. And if the climate is welcoming and fosters learning, and uh, the kids feel safe and welcomed, you know, research has shown that kids will come to school and teachers will benefit from that also from being positive and, you know, wanting to come to school, wanting to come to work just like the students. Okay. okay. And so tell me, how then did PBIS come to the territory? Okay. So actually, PBIS is not a new initiative to the territory. It's been established for many, many years. However, this is the first time um, we're federally funded. We're a five year grant. I'm hoping that. If the need is still there, we can reapply for several more years if the grant is there. So it came to the territory many years ago. And over time, some of the, the issues that they were having was that they loved PBIS, they wanted to work, but when they got to tier two, the red zone and the, uh, sorry, tier two, the yellow zone and a uh, red zone, tier three, they didn't have people to reach out to and say, you know, what do I do on a daily basis? This is Johnny's having issues, you know, Sue's having issues, what do I do? So now the difference is that we have a team of coaches and myself in the territory. So there's actually three coaches in St. Croix and three coaches for the St. Thomas, St. John, John district. And they're assigned to different schools. So they actually go out into the schools as much as possible and as much as the need is there, and help the schools implement PBIS. So Lingya, then what is it like being a coach? What are, what are some of your duties? Um, some of my duties as being a coach, like Ms. Peck mentioned, we go out into the schools, we um, assist the schools directly, we interact with the PBIS team. So each school has selected a team of members to um, implement or make kind of like serve as the decision making members. Um, I interact very closely with those members and assist them with implementation. So we come up with the policies. I, I don't make the decisions for them, but I guide them, um, provide them with examples, um, best practices. Um, I offer presentation staff presentations and team presentations for classroom management strategies. Uh, I offer um, that a database decision making. So I know oftentimes we get the data, mm -hmm. we collect all this data and then it sits there or we don't use it effectively. So I offer strategies and, and w w best practices on how to use that data to make changes. Okay. And so, Timothy, you were saying that there are schools that already have PBIS. For instance, uh, the St. Croix Elementary Schools, they rolled yes. that out in uh, September 2015. Um, yes, actually, I'm going to jump back for, for Linnea for a second. I just wanted to just, I'm so proud of my diverse team. Um, the team has two counselors. Um, Linnea has been a math teacher. I have someone that has been a certified teacher for many, many years, um, several different grades. We have someone that has been working in the juvenile justice system, um, and she's a social worker. So there's, it's such a diverse team that I feel like when situations come up, we're able to handle them and look at them a different light because of our various backgrounds. I'm also a speech language pathologist, so I've also been able to offer strategies to the coaches and the schools um, to help in that realm. Um, sorry, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> Jumping around. I'm excited. I'm excited. I knew I should have had that all past week. Uh, so the PBIS was rolled out in St. Okay. Croix, and so um, I wanted to hear a little bit more about that. Okay, so we're actually collaborating with um, the State Office of Special Education. They have a consultant named Dr. Covington Smith, and she has been working in the St. John District to get PBS going. Um, so we've really been trying to just collaborate and uh, be just a system of support for them. So for the rollout for 2015 for the St. Croix Elementary Schools, 
um, we just kind of let the uh, state office of special education uh, do their rollouts, but we're going to continue to have rollouts with the elementary schools in St. Thomas, St. John, probably by the end of this year, and one, I think BCB, one junior high in mm -hmm. St. Thomas, St. John district, and then uh, junior and senior high schools in St. Croix. Okay, and I think we also have some images of some of the pictures and visuals from the St. Croix schools displaying PBIS. So why don't we take a look at that now? Okay, so what you're seeing, what you're seeing is various rallies and rollouts at the in the St. Croix Elementary Schools. There's a mascot there, and PBIS is very um, ingrained in all the students. For example, one of the schools has a phrase. How do you swim to success with the three R's, respect yourself, others, and your environment? So you would do a rally based on those three R's. Um, and everybody has their own t-shirts, and you know each school could really, really uh, make it their own. And uh, this one picture shows kids actually leading the rally. So teachers could lead the rally, or students, could re uh, students can lead it also. There's a lot of ways that you can do it. Well Thank you so much. I mean, that was a lot. I, mean, I can keep going. Roll out. You were narrating. That, that was that was great. A high five. That was good. I, I want to then go to Linya uh, because you know you told us about the images and what it was mm -hmm. like. Uh, is it just geared? Because I saw a lot of elementary mm -hmm. level um, schools. Is it just geared towards elementary? Absolutely not. It's um, in schools on all levels, to include junior and senior high. Mm -hmm. Like Ms. Peck mentioned, we started in the territory in the elementary. So in St. Croix, they are implementing um, junior and senior high. On St. Thomas, we started with one, mm -hmm. which is um, Berta Sipo Shelter, and then next year we'll move on to the others. Okay. And so Ms. Peck, uh, when will PBIS roll out in all the schools for the St. Thomas, St. John district? So we're hoping right now, um, this year for our program, we really wanted to get all the policies and procedures in place and have like a soft rollout by the end of the year. Um, and then look towards next year to really schedule everything with perfection and that way um, we really just want to make sure all the policies are in place now. But the soft rollouts, we're hoping the end of May, beginning of June, and um, it should be a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah. And is there a difference because it seems almost a little similar. Some people get confused between positive behavior, um, positive praise, and then behavior specific praise. Okay, great question because general praise, if I just said, good job, Miss Ford, that's general praise. Mm -hmm. If I said, good job, Miss Ford, for sitting in your chair and staying on task, that's behavior specific praise. So what we try to instill, and it takes a lot of practice, is for the teachers when they're implementing PBIS, we've had them say, well, I'm doing positive praise. So then we really look at them, are they saying behavior specific praise or are they just giving generalized praise? And PBIS really wants the positive acknowledgements to go with a behavior. Um, if you attach it with a behavior, then it's more successful and research has shown that the student will display that behavior that you're looking for more often. You know, one of the things that we always mention to the parents when we do our parent, some of our parent trainings is when you give your, your child a present, pair it with something that they've done well. Acknowledge something positive. Say you get a chocolate bar at the supermarket. You know, Johnny, you're getting this chocolate bar because you did all your homework this week. Keep up the good work. That's behavior specific praise. So okay. that will encourage Johnny now to do his homework more often and you tie it with a pra you tie the praise with the the actual thing that they did. So you're encouraging the act instead of punishing a bad behavior. Correct. And that's one thing that uh, you know, I come from a classroom also and in the classroom I found myself looking, say for example, Johnny was always displaying poor behavior, then every day when I went in the classroom I'd look for that poor behavior. Well, PBS is different in the sense that you have the mind shift towards, instead of catching them do some, doing something poorly, you wanna catch them doing something good. And it could be as, as something as simple as staying on task or staying in a straight line. It really depends on the level of behaviors you're looking for for that individual student. And so then how is PBIS implementation measured? 
Even. Okay, mm -hmm. great question. So, PBS, I'm like the data the data geek. Um, <laughs> I collect all the data. I look at PowerSchool. I'm also a school-wide informational systems um, certified facilitator. So, I just analyze data. And one of the things that we look for is to, to prove that school culture has changed is to not only do informal observations when we walk in the school and see what it looks like and see the positivity and ask the students, you know, what are your three R's or what are your three B's and um, tell us some of your expectations, even with the teachers. So that proves that it's being implemented in the schools. In one sense, we look at academics, we look at office disciplinary referral forms, have they decreased? And we're very realistic. You know, the our children, we're not going to decrease every behavior every day. Yeah. But if you have 100 referral forms for major violations in a week and you drop from 100 to 75, then we're going to celebrate that success. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and our goal is usually to drop 5% every quarter. So we measure different things depending on those that school's need. And I heard that you said um, the behavioral forms. Are you universalizing okay. it? Okay. What's going on? Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, so one thing, um, I know that the Virgin Islands Department of Education does have a form already. Mm -hmm. We're just we're not going to take anything away that's working. Mm -hmm. We are just adding on to it, like IEP status, 504. And also, if you have the form, what are you doing with it? So one of the, the major issues in the schools is that the administrator is getting all of these forms. So we offer a different approach. Instead of them getting all the forms, what's classroom managed versus office managed? So we look at it a little differently. Also. Research has shown if they buy, if a school buys into their referral form, which may sound silly, but I like boxes and check marks, you know, and then somebody else may like a list and somebody else likes circles. So it really depends on the school. As long as all the pertinent information is there, we encourage to just use it and put it into PowerSchool so we could actually analyze it and help them with whatever their needs are. So it seems like you guys, although you're supporting and guiding, you're really staying true to what the culture of the school is yes. and respecting that kind of atmosphere and what they're used to. Like you said, with they like checks and boxes over circles. Right. I mean, even that little detail, that means that you're really listening to the schools. Definitely. There was a director on the mainland um, that mm -hmm. actually Linya introduced <laughs> me to. She had this phrase, I can't remember it verbatim, but it was basically something like, we're not telling the schools what to do or that they have to do it. We're just offering them a different way. Mm -hmm. We've had teachers come to us and say, well, if I can't punish, what do I do? Yeah. So we, here's your alternative. And we have tons of strategies, tons of websites, um, just the wealth of information that's research, you know, proven evidence-based research that does work. So. And so what thing does PBIS implementation look like in society? I mean, how is that, why is it so important? Okay. So, is that a tough one? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I have a vision and goal, and um, you know, I, Lydia's gonna start laughing at me. You know, like when you see the McDonald's arches, you, you see the golden arches, no matter wherever you travel, um, it's branded, you know what it is. I would love to see the pyramid across the territory, it's branded, we know what it is, because it's extremely important to sustain in the territory. One of the main reasons I can think of is that, for example, PBS improves graduation rate. So being on an island, of course, if say 300 students don't graduate this year and 300 students don't graduate the next year and the next year and the next year, you're now changing the climate of the territory. So if you look at the big picture, PBS is really needed. Because if this was on the mainland and say 300 students didn't graduate, they can disperse to other states. Whereas if you didn't graduate here, you may not have the capacity to leave. So it changes the, the climate of the territory. And um, that's something that we're taking very seriously. And we really want to push PBS I hadn't thought of it from that angle <laughs> yeah, before. So I, I'm like, that's brilliant <laughs> as you're talking. And so yeah. Lingya thing I want to know, is PBIS only for students? Uh, is it for adults, teachers? Who, who benefits from this? Everyone benefits from PBIS, um, not only students. It can be used in, actually, research is showing that 
businesses are asking and requesting PBIS, okay. daycare centers, nursing homes, because it's all about changing behavior and any system that works for changing behavior can be used anywhere. And so what about the home? I know we spoke about <laughs> school a mm. lot, but what, how can we use PBIS at home? So PBIS, it encourages use at home. Students will not only learn PBIS in school, if parents are also utilizing PBIS, it's going to make it easier because then we're all on the same page. We're yeah. all speaking the same language. So at home, they're hearing expectations, they're receiving positive praise, they come to school, it's the same thing. So it's, gonna, it's all about a mind shift and if everyone is doing it, then it's going to be easier. So when the students get those expectations at schools and then the parents know about okay. it and then continue, it just kind of reinforces. So parents can reinforce those as well as come up with their own for at home. So they can create a matrix for going to bed, what expectations um, they want their children to follow, mm. eating dinner in the bathroom. Um, getting dressed for school. So it's not limited to just school. Just um, school. It can be implemented at home as well. And so what kind of training do you and your members <laughs> receive in order to assist the schools with PBIS? Um, the first training that we actually received, we were afforded the opportunity to go to Chicago to the PBIS Leadership um, Conference. We received a wealth of information there. We also received training which is ongoing support once a month through the Office of Special Education. Um, we have a technical assistance um, person who gives us webinars. We, they offer some topics that they suggest and then we get to choose things that so some of my schools, I have some schools that they ask some tough questions. So when they <laughs> ask some tough questions and they kind of stump me sometimes, I would go back, well, Miss Peck, they're asking this. Ms. That's Peck, like teamwork you were talking <laughs> about. <laughs> so then we would, if Miss Peck, you know, can't really, or we need extra assistance, then we would suggest those topics to, um, and then they provide it through the webinars. And I That's keep one. hearing about strategies. What are some of the strategies that you offer the schools? So um, parent involvement, a lot of the schools, that's a major concern. So we um, can offer them ways to get their parents involved, get their parents to show up. Classroom management um, strategies, we can offer them strategies on using behavior specific praise, how to um, analyze their data and implement systems that would change the behavior that, that they want changed. Those are some of the strategies that we offer. So, Tamitha, then can you please give me an example then of one of those specific strategies that she was talking about? Okay, so for example, um, we, we are really big on research. Again, like I said, I'm the data geek. Mm -hmm. So even something as setting up your classroom systems with your expectations um, that are related to the school-wide expectations but are more specific for your classroom, um, what kind of positive acknowledgments are you going to have in the classroom? What type of data are you taking in the classroom to record the attendance, et cetera, what we talked about earlier? Also, um, depending on the level of the, the teacher, they may say, can you do an observation, watch me? And then we may model a um, PBIS related with Charlotte Danielson and um, common, co common Core Standards um, lesson plan. So we've modeled lesson plans for them and given them strategies in the lesson plan. So do like role play modeling, have those, those individuals practice because it's really about practice and, until it becomes ingrained and natural for you to give that behavior specific uh, acknowledgement. Um, so that's just some of them. I can really go on. You can go on. I can keep going. Um, you know, we've also helped, um, we've had teachers come to us and say, you know, we, we can't figure out what's going on and we, we realized that this student was an English language learner. And PBIS targets all. So it's not just picking out someone from special ed or English language learner and doing something different. The universals will cover all. However, if they need those additional supports, we're there to offer assistance to the teachers and the school in order to help the, the behavior issues that those students are having. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot again. We're going to go, can you give me an example of the universal and then the second tier and the third tier, just so okay. that people get a Okay. understanding. Okay, so say you walked into my school, my imaginary school, ABC, 
um, when you walked in, um, you can feel that it's a welcoming environment and that it fosters learning. And you can see that by all of the expectations. I don't like to say the word rules, but sometimes that helps for people to understand. So there's the school rules. And we try to stay away from any kind of negative language like don't, you shouldn't. We, we look for what do I want to see? So if you walked into the school and you looked at the, our big matrix of an explanation of all the different behaviors that we want to see in each location, okay, Ms. Ford, you stay to the left when you walk down the halls. Then when you walk down the hall, you'll see the visual supports, instructional tools that remind you to walk down the hall on the left. I mean, I'm giving you a very generic example. Um, which comes to mind that even as adults, we need visual supports and instructional tools mm -hmm. in our everyday lives. For example, when we go to the doctor's office, mm -hmm. most of the time we're walking in with our cell phones in our hand or Guilty. texting. Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and what do you see when you get up to the counter? A big red circle with a line through it, no cell phones. So that's our reminder not to use the cell phone. We know not to use the cell phone, but we need a reminder, just like the students need a reminder. So that's some of the ways. Um, so that's that, the universal one. That's universal. So every location, every setting in the school. And what they do is you define the behavior. So what is paying attention and listening in the classroom look like? So then you could do, you could have a, a lot of fun with it. You could have the students model and role play, or you know, there's been some schools that have the teachers model the poor behavior and the kids have a great time with that and mm -hmm. making fun and laughing. And, and then we, they say, how, well, how should we act? And then the students are actually telling them, you should do this. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can teach and reteach um, behavior. So you teach them the expectations in each location. So a rollout could look like for the students, is this a student-led one when they're very familiar with all the expectations and they could demonstrate it by modeling, by putting on a little show or a play or, you know, or by teachers, you know, having a little fun with it too and, and showing the poor behavior and the good behavior and saying which one. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you could do with the schools, but that's kind of, the short summary of it. Okay, well, <laughs> I appreciate that. And then I just want to say PBIS is something that's so new. I mean, mm -hmm. people, they hear it, but they don't know what it is. So I appreciate you guys truly coming here and explaining to us what it's all about. But it looks like our hall pass has expired and that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank my guests for you know, just coming and showing up and telling us all about PBIS. But it's time to go and I'll see you next week on Hall Pass. <laughs>